Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Lockett. So tell us, we know marriage is challenging. What are some of the biggest challenges that you overcame in order to last this long? That's a good question right there. We want you to get a seat and get comfortable. <laughs> yes. You said what were some of the biggest challenges? <laughs> we. It was, um, for me, one of the biggest challenge was desiring to want to accept what was going on. Because even when I, when we came into the marriage, um, I was the, the type of person that was, um, you're not going to just say anything to me. And, you know, one time with him, I told him, I said, look, I said, I will make you go into the bathroom and check yourself to see if you're a man. Damn, <laughs> I know, I'm telling the truth, Shane. They it. That's right, that's what I said. And um, after I said herself. that, you know, the Lord said, the Lord started to show me. Yeah, I was going to, yeah. Minister, I was speaking the word of God. I'm telling y'all the truth. And so, in the midst of that, God started dealing with me about true submissiveness, right? And said that, how could I be a representation of him? And I'm talking to the man of God like that, or I'm even carrying myself like that. And so when you say the challenges, I had to learn how to shut up, right? I had to learn how to be respectful, even though I felt like at that time I was deserving of respect but in the midst of it whether he was respecting me or not I had to learn how to still stand and so one of the things was me overcoming that challenge of being able to learn how to just be quiet and not challenge him at everything that was going on because he's, he, he's my husband and in spite of if I love God and I trust God to be who he is in my marriage, I didn't need to retaliate or uh, have that combat uh, mindset. So that's one of the, the things that I had to uh, overcome. Mm. Well, that, I, I can definitely relate to that. So, Daryl, what are some of the things that you saw in yourself that you had to overcome? One thing most definitely was uh, learning to be humble. Humility. Uh, I, I was born and raised in a home where my mom and dad were married. And even with me and my other siblings, his way of uh, expression was verbally, and it was harsh. A lot of times it was even mixed with profanity. So I, 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 it's like I adopted that trait. As I got older, that was my way of expression. And coming into uh, a relationship with her, leading into marriage, I saw my dad, he operated in, in brute force with his voice. And that was the same way I was even in this marriage. That was my way of expressing myself, you know, or trying to be more or less controlling, ex, ex, you know, with the exception of being in control. So I operated in me so much that, uh, you know, when you hear the word submission, you know, a wife is supposed to submit to the husband. The thing was for me, submission was do what I say do. <laughs> you know, so it, it was false judgment until I came into the word of God and God, you know, revealed to me what my place was. It wasn't for me to try and control her or try and tell her how to be a wife. That was for God to straighten her on that matter. But I, I had to allow God to deal with me first. So that's what my issue was. Humility. I, I struggled with humility at just humbling myself. Wow. Well, one last question before you get ready to cut the cake. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people, especially if they've been through marriage before and been through a divorce, it's very painful and sometimes it's hard to trust again. What would, what would you say helped you to trust to the point where you decide to really take that step in life again? If you will, I'm, I'm going to answer that. First of all, this is my third marriage. And this is my third. Marriage. And my first two divorces, I celebrated. I don't even drink. 
own party, but I had a celebration for myself. I was happy. Most people, you know, you know, they go into a depressed state when they're divorced. I was celebrating. I was happy to be divorced. But at, on, 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 in this marriage, especially this marriage here, knowing what God expected of me, it taught me how to basically cherish my wife and not to take advantage of her. To love her the way uh, we was reading a, a plan the other day, a, a devotional about marriage. And the writer was saying in the plan, he was like, did you not know when you mistreat your wife or your husband that you're mistreating God's, God's son-in-law or his daughter-in-law? And it just broke me down. I literally broke down to my knees. And I had to ask my wife to forgive me for the ways that I mistreated her. So a lot of times people think abuse is physical, but it's not physical. I was verbally abused, you know, in my tone, my mannerism, sometimes using profanity. It was just really messed up. But for the most part, I would like to encourage those that have been through it, know that if you're seeking to be married, again, first and foremost, learn what your requirements are when it comes to God. Let him set the standard, and you allow yourself to operate in that facet, being male or female. What I do. You so deep, I forgot the question. <laughs> what, what, what was it that made you choose to trust again and you know, try marriage one more time after being through the pain of divorce? Well, first of all, like I said, this is my third marriage, and I didn't go about marriage right in the first place. So, in my first marriage was based upon um, a daughter and um, another young lady who wanted to be sisters. I got married based off of that, right? The second time I got married, I was chasing after the man. The man wasn't chasing after me. And so, in this marriage, in regards to, I chose not to bring what was into what is. So, it wasn't about me needing to trust again. It was about me allowing him to be who he needed to be. Because um, just because somebody stepped on my foot don't mean I'm going to look for the next person to step on my foot. And so I, I, I have a saying, I have a little motto that I say, you know, you give a person enough rope to hang themselves. And so I don't, I never believed in carrying um, what somebody else did into what I, I was in. So it, it wasn't about me uh, needing to learn how to trust again. It was about me needing to really truly learn how to be a wife. And so when you come to a place where you're coming into a relationship, every baggage that you bring in there, you're going to unpack it. And so you have an overload of, of, of stuff that you really don't have no need for. You see what I'm saying? So um, I, I didn't need to deal with that part. So in my marriage, it was about me coming to a place of just trusting my husband. And then I learned that it was more so about me trusting God. Because I, at, some, at, at, at a point in time, I made him my God. I, I made him my God to a place where everything that was going on, or everything that I expected, or everything that should have been, I was expecting it. I even allowed myself to uh, lower my, my standards as a person to try to prove myself to, to him when I didn't need to. So 